All right, everybody, we're coming to you live right out here in Southwest Houston, and I got my good friend, Mr. Gary Monroe. What's going on, my brother? You know, Monroe, you know, I was just, you know, I'm so glad that me and you are on the same page because a lot of people be thinking I'm taking sides on this side and that side. But the only thing I'm trying to do is to make sure that our Jack Yates alumni know the truth. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, I posted about the a check that's made out uh, to uh, to uh, the organization that I never heard of, which was called uh, Change Happenings, and that was the check that Mr. Uh, Cal McNair, the owner of the Houston Texan, the Houston Texan wrote for four hundred and fifty thousand yeah. dollars. You know, and we as a black race of people. Mainly, we always have a problem with people trying to steal the money and trying to make money on the shortcut. Exactly. Can you explain, and the only thing I'm trying to do is make sure that all our Jack Yates alumni can stay together as one family without breaking up each other. Well, first of all, before I start, I want everybody to know that the comments that I'm going to make are not a reflection of Bully production. It's strictly Gary Monroe, so if anybody has any issues with what I say in this interview, then you will have to deal with Gary Monroe himself and not Bully Productions. It, this is all what I've got to say. First of all, our Yates family is a very unique family. It, it's a close-knit family. We protect each other. We protect our legacy. And right now, our legacy is under attack by our own people. And that has happened several times. That happened in the rebuilding of the school where our own people played the enemy against us. You know, because I didn't want the school to be torn down the front of it. You know, I didn't want it turned to, to, to Alabama. But our own people did that to us to, to try to say it was for the betterment of the community and for the school, which was a lie. It was money tied to it. So when I look at this George Floyd field fiasco situation, there's money tied to this thing. And the thing is, who is change happens? Where did these people come from? Why are they in the middle of Yates business, which is something that we don't do? We don't allow outsiders into our business. You know, if I got a problem with a Yates alumni, I pick up the phone. I don't, I don't do social media with my people. Okay. You know, I might drag all these politicians, but I don't do Yates lines. Now, if I got to come out and I got to speak on it, then you know we have a problem. So today we have a problem. This thing about this field, naming this field, it's all tied to money. Carl Davis, I love you to death, but you, you, you'd have made this situation too political. It's too political. And now you're inviting politics into the home that, ha that that's never had to deal with that for like 95 years. Okay. And it's tearing us apart from an alumni base. To, to name that field after Floyd, which is totally disrespectful, I've said it before and I stand on that. Okay, when you say disrespectful, who is we talking about they disrespecting? Well, first of all, you're disrespecting the legacy of Jack Yates football. You're disrespecting football royalty, and that comes in two facades. That, that comes in the form of the great Pat Patterson. And that comes in the form of the great Luther Booker. Mm -hmm. Now, if you go and you do the research around the, co uh, the country, you will find out that most fields are dedicated to coaches. Mm -hmm. They're de dedicated to coaches. So I think the only thing that would be fair would be to incorporate both those coaches' names, you know, Patterson, Booker, Field, and then we run from there. The guy that runs change happens. I don't know his name. But I got inside information that he's pushing to name this field after Floyd because it's tied to political money. So I'll start from this point. It's great that the Texans gave the money for the field. But when you think about the legacy of Jack Yates Senior High School, established in 1926, the good reverend resides in all of us that wear crimson and gold. And it's our duty to protect the legacy and the history of our school. It is our duty to do that. What's going on right now with Carl Davis inviting politics into our house 
is going to divide our house. It's going to divide our house. Why is it so important for this field to be named after George Floyd? Why is it so important to disrespect the legacy of Pat Patterson? To disrespect the legacy of Luther Booker? For George Floyd, it's not George's fault. I travel all around the country and do work for George. Most of it I do in the city of Minneapolis. And I've seen so many people use this man's name, use the memory of him to make millions of dollars off of him that is pitiful. This is tied to money. This is tied to politics. And that's not going to work for us. You do not disrespect the legacy of Jackie A. Senior High School by naming an athletic field after a young man who was just a basic football player. You disrespect all the players that were great that came there before George. I mean, I don't know all these guys' names. You know what I'm saying? But you got a set of state champions from 1965. Can you pick somebody from that team? You got a state champion from 1985. I played with Johnny Bailey. Could you, could you use his name? Yes, you could. And even George would tell you that would be the right thing to do. Because George was a Yates line. So George would tell you himself this is not right. So the thing is, who is change happens? Why would the Texans write a check to change happens? Who are you? Don't worry about it. I'll find out on my own. You say you're a nonprofit according to IRS laws. If you're a nonprofit, I can inspect your books anytime I get ready. I want to see where you get your money from. I want to see where your money goes now. And according to the IRS, when I, when I ask for that, you have five days to release that information. If you choose not to, it's punishable by up to a $5,000 fine for every day you don't open your books. Now, I want people to understand something. For, I think, about the last 10 years, you know, I don't know, maybe God put it in me. It's like I've been the gatekeeper for the crimson and gold. Anything that happens, I go to war for it and try to make it right. You feel what I'm saying? And I think everybody can agree on that. And I always try to do the right things for Jack Yates Senior High School, not Gary Monroe. I do what's right for Jack Yates Senior High School. So right now, you have a survey that's going to go out. This, this, this survey was, is being done by a committee that none of us that wear the crimson and gold realistically know about. I talked to some alumni this morning. They didn't know nothing about no survey. They didn't know nothing about no committee. This is a committee where people from HISD appointed people. Um, the principal appointed some people on this committee. But most of this committee is stacked up with JYNAA members. JYNAA members. And Carl is calling around trying to get the, these JYNAA members to, to, to jump on this thing where they name this field after George. Now here's the thing. What names are on the survey for people to pick from? You have the George Floyd Community Field, the George Floyd Field, the Roland Martin Field. Hold on a second, man. Bully. Did I not wear a Yates uniform or Yates football uniform? Do you remember Roland Martin ever having on an athletic uniform for Jack Yates Senior High School? Why would we name a field after Roland Martin? But there's also a space at the bottom of the survey that's blank for you to write in your suggestions. And my suggestion that I'm going to write in if I get the survey is Patterson Booker Field. That way you cover the whole legacy of our football program. The great ones, you feel what I'm saying? Because even after Coach Patterson, you still had the great Maurice McGowan that came through after Coach Patterson and Coach Booker. So, but I think it's only fair, that's what I would write in. But they are very, very adamant about naming this field after Floyd. So that tells me that it's tied to politics and that it's tied to money. So if you really wanted to do a survey, why don't you call a social distance meeting? of the Yates family of alumni. Put us all in one room or multiple rooms. We have this discussion as a family and we decide who this field should be named after. But to play these political games, I'm telling y'all right now, 
you will name that field George Floyd over my dead body. It's not going to happen. And if that means we end up in a court of law, with a lawsuit, I don't care. The process should work like this. You should have a community alumni meeting with your stakeholders, your parents, your kids that attend there now, and with the alumni. At that meeting, you should decide what the name of that's going to be, what the name of the field would be. At that point, it goes to the board, the HISD school board, who has to vote on it. Now, when you go to that meeting, it should be an open meeting. That means we can stand up there and support it, speak and support it, or we can stand up there and say we don't support it. At that point, the board would vote on what that name should be. If the name that they're bringing forward is Patterson Booker Field, and we go in there and we debate, then the board decides they're going to vote. Where, how, you know, we accept his name or we don't accept his name. That's the process. So why are we circumventing the process right now? Is it because, Carl, that you're connected to Rodney Ellis, who seems to have his hand all over this thing? Rodney Ellis is not a Yates line. He's a worse than coat. Let's get that straight. I'm an old man now. But I still know there's hidden animosity with some of these people that did not go to Jack Yates. Yeah, you're an old county commissioner now, but you're still a worthy coat. So anything that you could do to undermine the legacy of Jack Yates, that's what you would do. Are, are you in the middle of this call because maybe you're affiliated with your nonprofit that you have now? I know how nonprofits work. I ran them for 12 years. I know how easy it is to manipulate money from nonprofits. So if the check was written to change happens, who controls the money? Y'all tell me. It wasn't written to Jack A. Senior High School. It wasn't written to HISD. It was written to Change Happens. And now you're trying to shove George Floyd's name down our throat. That's not going to happen. If you're looking for a court battle, you're going to get one. You're going to get one from Gary Monroe. Because I have a stake in this school. I have a stake in this school just as well as every one of y'all out there has a stake in this school. Every one of y'all that walked them hallways when this school was on Elgin Street, when this school was on Sampson Street, and even you brand new babies that graduated on Alabama, you have a right to say what you need to say right now. Carl Davis, you're not the gatekeeper of Jack A. Senior High School. I'm letting you know this. Now, we can make this business or we can make it personal. It doesn't matter to me because I will die protecting the legacy of Jack A. Senior High School. It is so unfortunate what happened to George Floyd. We all feel it. We all feel it. I've been in Minnesota for over a year, back and forth, helping that community in the name of George. I never asked for a dollar while I was there. I paid my own expenses. But what you people are doing around the country, using this man's name to line your pockets, you will not affiliate Jack Hayes High School with that aspect of it. We will not be a part of a sham situation where somebody gets to walk away with some money in their pocket and I'm saying it and I ain't changing what I'm saying. Just because you want to be selfish and do it for you. Carl, you do not represent the class of 1986. That's my class and we have a problem with the name being George Floyd Field. Carl, you do not represent the 1985 state champions. That is my team. And there's not a man on that team that agrees with the name being George Floyd Field. We need to come to an impasse on this thing. Because in the immortal words of one of the greatest philosophers I ever knew, James Prince from Fifth Ward, Texas, if you want to go to war, I'll take you to war. If that's what you want to do, then on behalf of every Yates line, I'll take you to war. On behalf of Boo Lee, on behalf of Arva Howard, on behalf of Larry Blackman, on behalf of Miss Tanya Holden, every single person that walked that hallway, I will take you to war. You will not disrespect the legacy. An old coach before he died told me, and he knew he was about to go, he said, whatever you do, protect the legacy. I say, why me, coach? He said, because I'm going to tell you what I told you when you played. I know you're going to play four quarters. That's all you know. And I'm ready to play four quarters on this one. It's not going to happen. 
don't disrespect us one more minute with your sham games before this game get personal.